In this video, we will install the photorealistic mod and reshade on Cyberpunk and all additional mods to it. Before installing, I warn you that the videos that you could see on this mod was recorded 4K resolution, so I cannot guarantee the same quality at a lower resolution after installing the mod. The mod is not free. You can use the links under the video for the files. All other related mods are free. Now information for those who already had the mod installed or had any other mods installed and everything stopped working. After patch 2.21, a black screen appeared or windows with errors pop up. You need to update all the base mods. Specifically, I became too lazy to do this, do everything manually. I decided to switch to WordPress so that I could download the update to the mods with one button. If you, like me, used manual installation before, then go to the section of the root folder with the game. Delete all folders that weigh less than 20 and 60 gigabytes. There are only two of them. That is, you can safely delete all folders except the EP1 folder. It is 20 gigabytes and the content folder it is 60 gigabytes. You can delete all the other folders. I understand that there is probably a more adequate and correct solution. I suggest doing this for now, after we have deleted all the folders. We only have two folders left for 20 and 60 gigabytes. That is DLC and the main game itself. Go back to Steam, open the game properties, go to the installed files, check the integrity of the game files. Literally in a minute, we have all the necessary files for the game itself. We can move on to the next step in installing Vortex. The first thing we need to do is to write in Google Nexus mod Vortex. Go to the first link, click download the latest version of Vortex. After that, click download again. After downloading, launch and install Vortex. If you, like me, have a window pop up, just click fix. Log in to your account in the application. Now, in the search, select the game Cyberpunk. Click Manage. Download the extension that is required for Vortex. So, Vortex has restarted, but we have a new problem. Vortex automatically could not find our game. Let's point it out manually. Click Select Folder. My game is installed on Steam, so I choose Steam. Vortex offers us to install an extension from the developers called Red Mod. Go to DLC in Steam. Scroll down and see Red Mod here. Just download it, it is installed. And then we go back to Vortex. Now let's go to the section that we have with Cyberpunk. To the Mod section. This section is now empty. We installed Vortex. We'll come back to it. After we install DreamPunk, DreamPunk and Reshade will all be attached to one archive for convenience. Accordingly, after you download this archive, you can unpack this archive in any convenient place for you. I unpacked it on my desktop. Just open this folder. Now I find Cyberpunk myself in Steam. We open the root folder with the installed game. We go to the DreamPunk folder. If you have a regular screen without HDR support, we go to DreamPunk SDR. We just take Carl C, copy all the folders, and transfer them to the root folder by replacing the files. Now we go back to the folder above, to the folder above again, and launch the Reshade installer. In the installer, we select Cyberpunk. Select the second item. In this item, we select the file of our Reshade preset. Click open. We enter the folder in which we have Reshade itself and the previously unzipped mod. We go back to the DreamPunk folder. We go to the DreamPunk Reshade's folder. Here we select DreamPunk SDR open. That's it, we don't touch anything else here. Go ahead. Wait for the installation. Just run the game. So we see that the game has started. We see that the reshade menu has appeared. In order to open this menu, click the home button. Here we have a tutorial. You can go to the settings right away. At the top of the tab, go to the settings, go to the language section. The language is in the third tab. 
For the review, if you want, you can turn it all off. And here, I choose Russian. I just click on it. As you can see, the preset has already been selected. I click on it. Finish. These menus can be moved for convenience, again. At the top, we have checkboxes of the effects that have been selected at the moment. At the bottom are the settings of these very effects, which we will deal with later. It is also important to go to the add-on section and check that these four items have been selected by you, as well as by me. So, on this tab, we made sure that Rashada was installed on the game. While we are in the game, we can go to the settings, to the graphics, set the same settings as I have. It all depends on your video card. With the frame generator disabled, it will work perfectly, considering that a new DLSS 4 was installed in patch 2.21. So let's go back to the graphics settings. All graphics settings should be absolutely at the maximum values. With the path tracing enabled, you can leave the field of view at 80. Again, the frame will be wider, and accordingly, the load on the video card will be higher. As you can see, all settings are at the maximum. If your graphics card is not the most powerful, it doesn't mean you can't try this mod. You can disable path tracing. Yes, the graphics will not be like the author's video, but it will still be better than the same graphic settings without mods. So it's okay if you lower some sections of this graphics. For example, it seems to me that it is quite possible to win FPS from lowering the shadows settings, which are not always visible. So let's see what we have now. Intermediate result. And at this stage, we will return to the mods that are necessary for a comfortable game. We return to the text instructions in order to see the list of mods. Accordingly, we followed the link. We see the mod that needs to be installed. We press the Vortex button. We press Download. We put a tick, open the download in Vortex. The download is done. Since we have literally several mods, it will not take us much time. As we can see, in the Mods subsection, the mod that we needed to download has been downloaded, has the status of enabled. Accordingly, we continue with all the other mods in exactly the same way. So we have finally installed all the necessary mods so that we can play with the WoW effect. Here is such a large list we have. This list will be attached in the text instructions so that you can simply follow the links one by one and download it in Vortex. Now we can launch the game. Go to Steam, click play, wait for the launcher to start. In the launcher itself, in the settings, click enable mods and the launcher can be closed. Now we go back to Vortex. Now, to play with mods, we can go to Vortex every time and click on this play icon. I want to note that it will be much more convenient to use Vortex due to the fact that you can always check for updates to our mods. For example, patch 2.21. It broke some mods and we could simply restore these mods, their functionality, by pressing the update button because the mod developers managed to release a prompt update and accordingly, the functionality of the mods was restored. What do we do? Press the play button, Wait for the game to load. When you first start the game, you will see a window with two buttons in the middle. Press the right one and bind, that is, press the buttons that will be used to call the menu of this mod. I chose the key combination control shift zero. You can choose any key that is convenient for you or a combination of keys. The mod itself is necessary for using cheats in the console, for issuing guns, cars, levels, etc. A full list of commands will also be attached in an Excel table with a breakdown by command category. This additional mod is needed in order to assign a key or key combination to switch the visibility of the HUD that is the interface in the game. When you walk or drive around the city, you can turn off the interface to increase immersion and realism of the picture. Specifically, I have assigned the key combination Alt-Shift-F5. So, once it starts, go to Mods, Set Light Rain. To turn it off immediately, set it to zero. Here, for demonstration, I will turn on the extreme mod of loading LODs at maximum distance. Let's try to enter the game. Our weather is sunny. So, let's change it. Now, let's see what we have with the effects. Open the reshade settings by pressing the home button. This is how it all looks with letterbox at maximum. For myself, I immediately turn off letterbox. These are black bars on the screen. You can actually just make them smaller. For example, like this, 
Yes. This makes the camera more cinematic, but I generally turn it off, since for screenshots, it's probably cool, but in general, I don't really like it. And this effect, what is out of focus in your field of view, is blurred. This is the bokeh effect created. I don't really like it, but without blur, often the poor rendering of distant objects begins to show through. Right now, it is quite good, thanks to the fact that I set the extreme mode at the maximum distance. But to be honest, it is still visible that the rendering range is not very high quality. So in general, you can probably leave the bokeh itself. But this point of autofocus speed can be turned down to zero. Because what is the point of delaying focus when moving the camera? Look, I'm walking and it's just a blur. That is, if I come up like this, it will focus on a pole or a car. It understands well what to focus on. But if I walk like this, it doesn't configure anything, then it will just be a blur. Or rather, it will be bokeh. So you need to try playing with these settings. If you tweaked something and forgot what the settings were, it's okay. You can always press this button and return it back. Anyway, what I want to say about this effect is that even if you set it to the fastest focusing and minimum focal length, as you can see, a small blur appears in the distance and on the headlights of these cars. On the one hand, it adds a bit of cinematography. On the other hand, someone may not like this picture, but if you turn it off, you may not like the rendering distance. That is, you need to try and see, for example, set the extreme and the highest rendering distance, and try without it, for example, whether this picture suits you. For me, it's very sharp, and for me, as a person with not the best eyesight, it seems to me that it's quite sharply different from how it looks in life. In life, to be honest, everything looks a little more blurry, especially in the distance, specifically for me. Therefore, these settings, you can just stand somewhere and try to tweak them and see what changes. So, as for what problems may arise with the game, everything will be written in the text instructions. For all questions, you can contact Telegram or Instagram. Thanks for watching. Good luck with the installation.